Well, good morning, friends. Good to be back in the U.S. of A. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> happy, happy, happy to be with you here today from beautiful downtown Westminster, Colorado. God's country, as it is also known. Right? Okay. Okie dokie. Well, God bless every single one of you. And God bless Boost Church. And God bless Jesus. And praise the Lord, what a good day it's going to be. Golden opportunities are coming to you. And God's with you, God's for you, God's on your side. No weapon formed against you can prosper. The devil is a liar and Jesus is Lord. Let's get right into our Bible reading here today. We're going to be in one of the, um, <laughs> I say this pretty often, one of my favorite chapters. One of my favorite chapters is going to be Mark chapter 4. I said Mark chapter 4. Okay, you know where to find that, right? Okay, New Testament. Uh, don't have my paper Bible open. <laughs> kind of gone to the uh, electronic here because of the, well, for some technical reasons. But, uh, so I can't joke around and tell you what page to look at right now because I'm fat fingering my computer here. All right. Mark chapter 4, verse 1. Okay, you ready? Who's with me? I got a buddy right here. There's my friend right there. God bless you guys. Okay. We are on, we're on, I don't know if I'm on uh, Instagram or not, I thought I was, but I got a funny looking white button, what's that white button? Let me try it again here on Instagram, okay? Live, hit the live, checking connection, you are now live, I think we're live on Instagram, okay? Uh, again, uh, I'm going to be uploading, let me move that thing because we don't want to be seeing no wires, can't be seeing those the ceiling and the wires up there, can't be doing that. Um, we're... I'm going to be working on YouTube, Let's see if I can't get YouTube going here in the next day or so, figure out what's wrong with YouTube, if I need new software or whatever the deal is, I'm not sure, but um, just got home kind of late last night, and uh, it's good to be back, sleep in your own bed, you know, and stuff like that, amen, glory, You're drinking coffee from your own cup, that's good, right, <laughs> it's all good, I love Colorado, I love being home. Uh, thank you for letting me and Cindy have a little time off, um, uh, and uh, praise the Lord. All right, M uh, Mark chapter 4, verse 1, you ready? All right, here we go. Hang on tight. Put your tray table in the upright and locked position. <laughs> Fasten your seatbelt low and tight across your waist. And he began to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude. Good morning, God bless you, good to see you, all right. Uh, there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, or in his way of teaching, or consistent with uh, everything else that he has said. It's, it's so important that, a, you know, your Bible teachers, okay, and listen, it's good to be not hypercritical, but it's good to be at least on your toes. Uh, you know, I think part of my job is to keep you on your toes. And sometimes when you're reading through the New Testament, I'm talking about me, all right? Sometimes when I'm reading through the Testament, the New Testament, or reading out loud, I say some things and I say, why did you say that? That wasn't exactly, you know, you think about it later and you think, that didn't come out right, right? That can happen to anybody. And if you're going to read through the New Testament and comment on the New Testament, things like that are going to happen uh, pretty often. And that, that's okay because, you know, God needs to be speaking to you. You, have to, you should have your own relationship with God. I would never intentionally mislead God's people. I mean, so help me, Jesus. I would never do that. You, if you, I mean, that, that's, that's the essence of being in the ministry, Right? So that's settled in my heart and in my mind, hopefully in yours too. However, we all make mistakes. None of us have complete light on all the scriptures. And you know, I've said things, even like I was thinking about something I said yesterday, I'm like, that wasn't, you could do better than that. You know, you could do better than that. Okay, that doesn't rise to the level of blasphemy. It doesn't rise to the level of doctrinal error. Okay. On the other hand, part of my job is to help you stay alert, stay on your toes spiritually, right? Don't get complacent. Be focused about what you're hearing, whether it's from, from this platform or anything else you're listening to. 
and again, not hypercritical, but on your toes, and, and you need to have your own relationship with God. I hope I'm making myself clear. All right, pray, pray for me. <laughs> that, I would make my, that I would make it as clear as possible. Uh, in his doctrine, verse 3, hearken and behold, look and listen. There went out a sower to sow, or a planter with a, you know, a sack of seeds. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. And when the sun was up, it was scorched, because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up, and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said unto them, He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, you know, this is, the, the, this is he says later on in this chapter, he indicates that this is the somewhat the, the master parable of all of the parables. He says, if you don't understand this parable, how can you understand any of the others? And what he's saying in that is that this is somewhat the kingdom, this is the root of all kingdom wisdom. I'm going to put it like that. And so there's so much here. You could teach on this one chapter for a hundred years and not cover the whole thing. We're reading through the New Testament in a year, so I'm not going to be able to, neither can I, you know, elucidate on every concept in this, in this passage. There's just too much here. But in time past, God has graced me and allowed me to share a few thoughts about this, and I'd like to refer to those briefly, if I may. Okay. So I'm going to go directly to the next stage. That was just all parabolic statements that he just made. He doesn't clarify anything. He just throws it out there. He says, if you got ears to hear, let him hear. In other, it's like he's throwing meat at a blind dog and saying, here it is. <laughs> a sower went out to sow. Okay. Come on, where'd I go here? Okay, mama, where'd I go? So on good ground, fell on thorns, grew up, choked it, and he said, he that has ears to hear. Verse 10. And when he was alone, they that were, maybe I should keep my glasses on. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. So Jesus had the multitude. And you have these concentric circles of people that paid greater attention and got more out of his ministry and were more faithful and more loyal to the spoken word than others. It says, they that were about him with the twelve. So this is not the twelve, it's the next circle. You see, you had John was the beloved apostle, right? I mean, that was, John said, I'm his favorite. <laughs> okay, fine, okay, fine. You're the favorite, okay. Okay. But he also had Peter and James and John, the, the, the top three guys that, you know, they seemed like they were always with him when the glory hit, you know. And then there was the 12. So you see these concentric circles of people that loved him the most. The same is true with us, right? The same is true with us. The, the more you love him, the more you tune into Jesus, the more you're going to get out of him. It's really simple. It's really, really simple stuff. But they that were about him with the twelve. So you have John, you have Peter, James, and John, you have the twelve, and then the next group. Now, I don't know who this group was. We don't know. We, it doesn't say. But you can, you know, kind of use your imagination a little bit. It might have been like the wives and the brothers and the moms and the dads and the ankle, a, ankles and the aunts and uncles and the cousins and stuff of the twelve apostles. Their friends, their co-workers, their neighbors, people that, you know, the apostles said, hey, you got to know this Jesus and people that join themselves to them. Sometimes this second concentric circle of uh, discipleship is, the, some of their names are mentioned, I believe it is in, in about Luke chapter 12, where it says, Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod, Steward, uh, and, and several others that were ministering to him of their substance. All right, there was the, that was the next circle. Then there was the 70, okay, that he set out in, uh, in, in the book of Luke to do, because there was more work than what the 12 could do. All right, but they that were about him with the twelve asked about the parable in, in verse 10, verse 11. He said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the, of what, of what, of what? The kingdom of God. Like we said yesterday or uh, Sunday, 
This term kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, uh, it's 127 times in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Man, if, if, there's, a, if there's a more significant concept in, in, the, in the words of Christ, I'd like to know what it is than the kingdom. Say amen, somebody. He always goes back to the kingdom, and, and we've missed it. I've missed it. Preachers have missed it. The body of Christ has missed it. We're preaching about everything else, and the whole thing is about the kingdom. It's about the king and his kingdom. I mean, the, the, the love walk is the law of the kingdom. It's the law of the land. Prosperity is, is, the, is, is supposed to be normal in the kingdom. Healing, is, sickness is supposed to be, what, what? James wrote to the church and said, is there any sick among you? <laughs> As if you should have to look around to find somebody sick in the kingdom. Sickness is not normal in the kingdom, guys. It's not normal. And I'm just going to say this. Thank you for letting me sip a little coffee. It's nice to drink my own brew from my own cup. Thank you. God bless you. As a pastor, I've been pastoring now since uh, November of 2014. And I've noticed this. I'm just going to make this little observation and we're going to keep on moving. Some people struggle with sickness. I'm just going to, you know, cut to the chase. Some people struggle with the same nagging ailments for decades. And I'm not, I'm not making it, I'm, I'm doing my best not to make anybody feel like, oh my God, he's, a, he's mean. No, that's not what I want to do. I want to help people. Serve God, help people, make a difference. But I've, I know mature Christians that love the Lord as much as I do. And that some of them have told me, you know, we know as much or more about the Bible than you do, preacher. Dandy. Cool. <laughs> but they, st they deal with nagging physical ailments for decades. Okay? And I'm just going to say this. You can take it. You can like it. You can lump it. I don't care. You can write me whatever you want to do. They never got a concept of the kingdom. They think that the faith message is all about me getting my stuff together. Me getting my money. I got to get my money. I want to be rich today. Well, brother, in the kingdom, you're already rich if you believe it. I mean, I, come on. But it's kingdom wealth. What is kingdom wealth about? It's about the king. It's about the king. Exp Am I pre I'm preaching today. I'm Be nice, preacher. Smile. It's about kingdom wealth. It's about the king and his kingdom expanding his kingdom. The king wants to expand his kingdom. Your neighbors right across the street that don't know the Lord, what is the king thinking about? You getting rich or them getting saved? Now listen to me. You getting rich makes them want to get saved. So there's a fine line here, and you can get in the ditch on either side. It's all about souls, Brian. Well, yeah, it's about souls, but what, what about you? What about your family? What about your rent? What about, you know, paying your stuff off and... Having some financial freedom and being able to come and go as you please. Well, in the kingdom, that's normal. I said, that's normal in the kingdom. I said, it's normal in the kingdom to be, have enough resources to come and go as you please. Do what you want to do. Have freedom. No worries. No finance. I'm preaching today. But when we make it all about me, you're not a, it's not a kingdom idea. It's not a kingdom mindset. Yeah, healing's right. Yeah, prosperity is the... It's, yeah, it's true. It's in there. I mean, I'm living it. But it's not about me and my prosperity. It's about the king and his kingdom. And if I'll get on board with the king's agenda, brother, bless his holy name. If I'll get on board with the king and his agenda, your financial problems are going to melt away like a snowball in Sarasota, Florida. Let me tell you. Glory. If you get on board with the king and his kingdom. You remember uh, uh, Bruchko? The book, Bruchko, you ought to get it. It's about the story of Bruce Olson, the missionary, a skinny, blonde-haired kid who bought a one-way ticket to somewhere in South America and left the airport and took a taxi cab as far as that road would go, got out of the cab and walked off into the jungle. He's been out there, if he's still alive, for like 50 years now, ministering to the Motaloni Indians out there in the Amazon jungle. It took him like two months to make contact because they saw him, but he never saw them. And he dealt with all kinds of stuff, the parasites and, the, and all kinds of stuff. 
at one point he he got uh, hepatitis. Something bit him or stung him or something. And uh, uh, he started turning yellow. He was dying. He had liver failure. He just said, well, you know what, Lord, you sent me out here to reach these people. And if I die, I can't do that. So I'm going to walk out of this tent and I'm healed and that's it. And he did. That was it. He didn't sit here and, and, and confess scriptures for hours a day. He didn't know anything about that. He just said, well, King, you know, you want me to do this job. And if I'm going to do this job, I'm going to have to be well. So I just believe I receive it. Glory. Hallelujah. Here we go. Whether I die, whether I live, I really don't care. I'm going to serve you. And in that, as he walked that out, healing came. That's the way it's supposed to be. It's not just so you can get well, so you can vegetate in front of that 55-inch peephole into paradise for the rest of your life comfortably. That's not what this is about. It's about the kingdom. What verse are we on here? <laughs> And he said unto them, verse 13, you guys don't know this parable? How are you going to know all these parables? Okay, I, I missed a couple of verses there, didn't I, Gary? Gary you, Gary's going to call me and say, Brian, you, you, you missed some. Unto you it is given to know, verse 11, the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are outside, they don't get any of this stuff, man. They don't get it because they're not. they don't have a kingdom mindset. If you don't have a kingdom mindset, you cannot interpret the Bible. I'm just going to say it like that. You're going to be hopelessly confused. You're going to have doctrinal issues. Have a nice day. <laughs> all these things are done in parables to those out there on the outside. It's all parabolic, man. That seeing they may see. He's quoting Isaiah. That see, they're going to fulfill this prophecy of Isaiah. That seeing they may see and not perceive. And as a pastor, I've seen this over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Where people, they know there's, there's truth in the gospel. They know there's power in the gospel. They know there's healing. They know there's prosperity. They know there's peace. They know there's rest. They know it's all in there. But they don't seem to be able to access any of it. That's, that's a crying shame. That's what that is. That's a bummer, dude. It's not okay. It's not normal. I said it's not normal. To know it's in there and not be able to access it. And your name's on it. If you're whosoever. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. That seeing they may see and not perceive. Hearing they may hear and not understand. Lest at any time they should be converted or have a change of mind. Habits. Direction. Purpose. Say Purpose should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. Other writers of this same, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and even in the book of Acts, I believe this is quoted over and over and over again. This prophecy of Isaiah, and I don't have it at my fingertips. Some of you have reference Bibles in front of you and you know exactly he's quoting Isaiah right here. Some of the gospel writers, either Matthew, Luke, or John, and I believe at the last chapter of the book of Acts, the Apostle Paul speaking to the, the Jewish people there in uh, at his rented house in in, uh, in Rome says, seeing they may see, and not not, they're not going to get it, lest at any time they should be converted and I should heal them. The other writers say heal. Mark says sins forgiven. Same thing. Same power. Healing and the forgiveness of sins in the heart and the mind of Almighty God go together. They go together like peanut butter and jelly, brother. <laughs> well, you know, you knew I'd come back rested, tanned, and ready, right? <laughs> and he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? How then will you know all the parables? If you don't understand the kingdom, forget it. You're not going to understand any of it. Have a nice day. The sower sows the word. These are they by the wayside. By the wayside, near the path, they're close, but no cigar. They're, they're close to God's will. They're close to the kingdom mindset. They kind of get a little bit of it. But they keep getting pulled off the road. They keep getting pulled off the pathway by shiny objects. They're by the wayside. They're not on the hard road. They're not on the good 
you know, in, in those days, the Romans built these roads. That's one of the reasons they were able to expand their, their empire, you know, to the known world, is because they were road builders. And their armies and commerce could go back and forth on these roads. That's why they were so powerful economically and militarily. And you got off of that road, man. I mean, we just went through Florida. I mean, you get off of that road, you're out here in a swamp or you're in this sawgrass 10 feet high. You can't do anything. You're out there in those mangrove wildernesses, you know. You can't, you can't even walk through that stuff. You could be so close to God's will. But without a kingdom mindset, you're going to be hopelessly lost in the tall grass of me and my stuff. And the whole world revolves around me and my stuff and my hate healing and my money and me, 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 I, me, mine. I think Cindy's going to come down here and tell me to pipe down. <laughs> Aren't you? Are you coming down here to tell me to pipe down a little bit? <laughs> She's doing this here. Okay, cowboy. Easy there, cowboy. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus. They're by the wayside where the word is sown. They're, man, they're so close. Oh, my goodness. They're so close. It's heartbreaking to see people so close. They had every opportunity to fulfill their destiny. But without a kingdom mindset, it's not happening, brother. This is not happening. You could be so close. And I've known you have too. So many people that were, man, you guys were, you were so close to fulfilling your destiny. But you abandoned a kingdom mindset. And you took on an I, me, mine mindset. That's what Adam did in the beginning. That's what Adam did. God said, you can have all this stuff. Can I have my way here? This one little thing. God said, can I just have my way with one tree? One tree. I want to have my way with one tree. Can, can we do this? And Adam's like, yeah, not so much, you know. <laughs> it's about me. It's about what I want. It looks good. It tastes good. It makes me feel good. I want this. I, 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 I. Me, 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 me. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. We're at the same crossroads today. These are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. And it's easy for him to do it. And these are they likewise, man, I could go, obviously, till lunchtime on this, but I'm going to try to wrap it up here. Bless the Lord Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. When they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away that was the word that was sown in their hearts, and these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately, I mean, they receive it with gladness. These are the emotional ones. You know, they're the flag wavers. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> Immediately receive it with gladness. Have no root in themselves. So endure it for a time. Afterward, when persecution or affliction ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Now, what is this stony ground? Well, uh, the prophet Ezekiel said, I'm going to make a new covenant with God's people. God speaking through the prophet Ezekiel said, there's coming a new covenant. I'm going to take away the stony heart out of your flesh, out of you, and I'm going to put in you a heart of flesh, a tender heart. The heart of man is the intentions of a man or a woman. That's what the heart is in the Bible. It's our intentions. And when there's things in our heart that uh, what Jesus calls stony ground, there's things in there that don't belong. It's usually stuff like unforgiveness, jealousy. Hatred, envy. Mm -hmm. There's things in there that don't belong. A victim mentality. I said a victim mentality. In, 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 in every conflict, we see ourselves as a victim. You know, I just can't get ahead. For whatever reason, my color, where I was born, you know, my economic status, whatever. You know, I'm the black sheep of the family. We're, we're always adopted. We take the, it's the easy way out, man, to take the victim mentality. Because you're not, you don't, you're not, you're not responsible for your own failure if you, if you just assume the victim role. You wish. But you're still responsible. You don't have to be a victim. I don't care what color you are, where you're born, none of that. I don't care. None, none of it matters. It's what you say that matters. 
It's not what they said about you. It's what you say about you is, is the, the rudder that's going to steer your life. And if there's stony things in our heart, then the word can't take deep root. These are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. And the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lusts of other things, entering in and choke the word. Good to see you. God bless you. Let's try to get out of the thing here. There we go. What are thorns? Well, if you go all the way back to Numbers 33, 55, Joshua told the children of Israel, he says, when you come into the land of the Lord thy God has promised that you're going to see the Amorites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the, all these Amorites, the Devilites, the Demonites, the smoking dopeites, and the alcoholics, fear suckingites, and all of this stuff, right? <laughs> the... the <laughs> <laughs> all the ites, the demonites, that all the stuff you should have chased out. He said, if you don't chase them out, if you don't chase out every demon out of your life as a Christian, there are going to be thorns in your sides and pricks in your eyes. You are responsible for the spiritual atmosphere that you live in. Uh, he says, these are they that are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. There's things in their lives that they should have gotten rid of a long time ago, but they refuse to do it either lazy or, or whatever, for whatever reason, they just don't get rid of the stuff they should have got rid of. That's thorns, and it chokes the word, and they become unfruitful. Verse 20, these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said unto them, is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? Did God give you a light? This is this is kingdom mentality, right? This is kingdom mentality. Did God give you the kingdom candle to hide it? Thank you, sister. It's uh, that was uh, Isaiah chapter six, verse nine through nine and ten. Seeing they may see, hearing they may hear, and not understand. Look it up. <laughs> did God give you your gospel candle for you to hide it somewhere? No, He did not. Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. If we had opportunity to propagate the gospel in our circle of influence and we did not do it, that's going to be manifested someday. It's going to be revealed someday. That we were called to stand in a certain place, in a region, with a, a certain kind of influence. God anointed us for this. He gave us the candle and we didn't do it. That's going to be revealed. We might as well get with the program. I said, we might as well get with it here. Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, take heed what you hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. More what? <laughs> more seed. More fruit. More opportunity. More favor more blessing. The, the engine that drives the kingdom is hearing. It's showing up for the regular hearing sessions because you're fueled by the faith that comes from hearing. We are kept on the hard road of the kingdom agenda by consistent biblical instruction and, and hearing that produces faith, that produces power, that executes and enables God's agenda to come and flow through us. For he that hath to him shall be given, and he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath. If you don't take what God has given you and use it for his purposes, you will lose it. Man, I wish I could say that a little nicer. Let me see if I can say that just a little bit nicer. If we don't take the resources, the opportunity, the anointing that God has given us, for his kingdom purposes, and use it for his kingdom purposes. If we fail in this assignment, it'll be taken from us. This is consistent through the Bible. God is looking for a people that will that will be obedient unto him, not people that just want to get saved and get all their stuff together and then, you know, and then and then sit there in, in semi-retirement for the rest of their life and come quickly, Lord Jesus. But God is looking for a people that are willing to take territory for the king. 
That means souls. Cities and souls. Nations and souls. States and souls. And he said unto them, so is what? Verse 26. And he said unto them, so is, what's that say? What's that say? <laughs> I can't hear you. What? So is what? The kingdom of God. When he says, so is the kingdom. I'm going to try a different translation here. I'm going to turn over here to uh, in my uh, blue letter Bible and look. The NLT says, the kingdom of God is like a, fa a farmer who scatters seed on the ground. The NIV says, this is what the kingdom of God is like. The CSB says, the kingdom of God is like this. Jesus said, he said this over and over. The kingdom of God is, is like this. This is what it's like. He had to show us something that we could see and understand to help us to understand the unseen concepts of the kingdom. Is that good? That's good, isn't it? And um, so is, verse 26, the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up. He doesn't even know how. He doesn't know how the seed works, but he knows it works, right? I said he knows it works. He may not understand how it works, but he knows it works. And it works when we work it. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. You're not responsible for the, for the growing of the seed. You're responsible for the planting and the harvesting. There's things you can do. I mean, you can water your seed, sure. But the earth is going to bring forth seed if you just start sowing. Amen. Say amen, somebody. That's good. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, and after that the full corn in the ear. And when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Brother, the, the Boost Church is going to learn how to harvest in 2021, I said. We're going to learn how to harvest, how to reap a harvest. And he said unto them, verse 30, where until we liken, where until shall we liken the kingdom? How have we missed this? It's right here. How have we missed this? Where unto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? Jesus is, is looking for something in the seen world that he can use to demonstrate the unseen concepts of the kingdom to his disciples. Standing there. On the beach. He's in the boat and they're on the beach listening to him. Can you see it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up. When it is sown, it groweth up and becomes greater than all herbs and shoots out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. And with many such parables spake he the word unto them as they were able to hear it. So you can see from this that we increase in our ability to hear by consistent hearing. Just like anything else. I mean, if you're weightlifting or you're practicing karate or trying to you know, learn, learn a language, you build on it a little bit of time. You don't start out as a black belt your first day. Whatever you're doing and whatever pursuit or discipline you're, you're, you're engaging in, there is a developmental stage. And that's what's happening here. He says, with many other parables, spake he the word unto them, verse 33, as they were able to hear it. See, the speaker's ability to teach the Bible is largely dependent on the hearer's ability to hear. Part of my job is to help you expand your ability to hear from God by studying the Bible. But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to the disciples. So you see these concentric circles. You have the multitude they that were about him with the twelve, then the twelve. But he couldn't say things to the multitude that he said to the twelve. Verse 35, And the same day, when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. 
And when he had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and they were also there were also with him also other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the we <laughs> English, Brian, it's not that hard. It's Elizabethan English, but it still is not that hard. Let me see if I can clean up the screen there on YouTube. There, that's a little better. There arose, verse 37, a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full of water, that is. And he was in the back of the ship asleep on a pillow. You know, he's been preaching all day long. He's crashed out. <clears throat> and they awake him and say to him, Master, carest thou not that we're perishing? We're dying. Don't you care? We're dying out here. I guess the answer to that question is not much. <laughs> no, no, I don't care. Tell your faith, buddy. I don't care. Jesus don't care. Jimmy Crack Corn and I don't care. <laughs> yeah, but the coronavirus is coming. I don't care. Yeah, but there's, there's coming a big downturn in the economy. I don't care. Yeah, but the Republicans are taking over. I don't care. The Democrats are taking over. I don't care. CNN's taking over. <laughs> Twitter's going away. <laughs> I don't care. I don't, I, don't, I don't care. Praise the Lord. We're all going to be starving here in a couple of months. You know, they're shutting everything down. I, I don't care, bro. I, I don't care. I refuse to worry. To, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. You got stuff you're supposed to do today, and worry is not on that list. You look around. Is there something you've been neglecting, something you need to start doing? that you The Lord's been dealing with you about doing, hey, why don't you start doing this? <laughs> he talks to me that way. When are you going to do something about this? And I'm like, oh, never. He's like, well, if you don't, something's going to happen. Something bad. Why don't you get with it here? He does deals with me like that for years over some dumb little thing that I refuse to do. And we eventually come around sometimes. And, and life, and amazing, you know, life gets better when you start doing what God's been telling you for years to do. But worry is not something he's telling you to do. That is a distraction from the things that God is telling you to do. I don't care. Verse 39, And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so fearful? What, how come you're so afraid? Seriously, do you really think we're going to sink out here in this, in this dumb lake? Really? That's what you believe? What? What? What TV station have you been? What cables? You, what are you watching? How can you believe stuff like this? Where does this come from? <laughs> well, faith comes by hearing. If you're listening to the wrong stuff, you're getting the wrong inputs, you're going to have the wrong kind of faith. Faith and disaster. That's what you're going to have. If you're looking at the wrong stuff all the time. 